Hello everybody. Today we're going to be talking about one dozen things you need to know about drawing automation. And to do that, I'm using my song called Moy Rustang, which happens to have a lot of automation in these plucky synth sound parts. I have so much automation because this sound needs to evolve over time. So I'm going to need to automate the cutoff to make it darker in the beginning and then brighter as it goes on, along with maybe the EQ, the ping pong delay, and the volume. Number one, in order to draw automation, you must first display the parameter line by selecting it from the chooser menu or clicking directly on a parameter. So over here is the chooser menu in arrangement view. And at the top, we have the device chooser, and at the bottom, the control chooser. So at the top, I can select, if I want to automate, let's say, volume, I would want to select the mixer. And at the bottom, I could ch click on track volume, as opposed to things like pan, speaker on, and all these other parameters. If I wanted to automate uh, this EQ8, uh, the number three, and I want to change th number three's frequency. I would just click on it. You see this little box appears around it. And you notice up here the parameters have changed to EQ8 on the, on the device selector. And on the chooser, it's three frequency A. Number two, add breakpoints by clicking on an automation lane. Click again on the breakpoint to delete it. So let me zoom in a bit here. So if I want to add a breakpoint right here, notice that when my mouse gets close, a little dot hovers over it. I click on it once to create the automation. And I can click again to delete it. Number three, to move a breakpoint, click on it and drag in any direction. Holding down the command key for vertical movements will refine the resolution. So again, let's create a breakpoint here. I can drag it up or down, left and right. Now if I'm holding down the command key, as I drag up and down, I can't drag to the left and right now, but I can drag up and down with a lot more precision. Number four. To move two breakpoints and the line between them, place the cursor close enough to the line so that it turns blue, and then click and drag. Or you can just click the line while holding down the shift key. So let me create another breakpoint here. And you see how my mouse, when it gets close, it starts to turn blue. At that point, you can drag. Or a little up here, you can drag. Or while your mouse is on the line, holding down shift, we'll let you drag. Number five, to curve the line between two breakpoints, place the cursor close enough to the line so that it turns blue, like before, number four, and hold down the option key before you drag. You notice a little curve that'll show up next to the mouse. So right now, my mouse is getting close to the line until it turns blue. Now I'm going to click down Option or the Alt key, and you'll see that little curve that shows up. And now I can drag it and create a curvy line. Number six, to move a selection up or down, first make the selection in the timeline, and then place the cursor close enough to the line, again turning it blue, and then just drag. So let's say I want this selection right here to be moved up or down. You just make the selection on the timeline, go over and then drag up or down. And this will work even if you have a lot of breakpoints going all over the place. Number seven, if you move a breakpoint in a selection, all other breakpoints in the same selection will move too. So let me again make this selection here. These breakpoints are these little dots. 
So let me select one of these dots, and here I can move it all over the place. All of the breakpoints move. Number eight. You can draw automation with the pencil tool by first switching on draw mode by clicking the B key, or by going up to the top right and clicking the pencil button. To override the grid, press Command-4 to turn off the grid or hold the Option key down as you draw. You can also press and hold down the B key as you draw to temporarily switch to draw mode. As you release the B key, it switches back to your normal cursor pointer. So let's go up to the top right and click the Draw tool on and off. Or again, as I said, you can click B to toggle on and off. And here we can draw automation in with steps. Let me click Command 4 to turn off the grid. So now the steps draw in a more fine line. Click Command 4 again to turn the grid back on. And to temporarily turn off the grid, you can hold down the Option or Alt key. So again, let me just draw this just to show you that that's the normal draw. And then if I hold down the option alt, again, it looks just like it did when I turned the grid off. Number nine, automate tempo changes in the arrangement master track. So here we are in arrangement view. Let's go down to the master track and expand it. And here we still have the same device chooser and control chooser. So we can choose Mixer and Song Tempo along with Volume Panning, Groove Amount, and Crossfade and Speaker On. You can also set the maximum and minimum range. So let's say we want to go from 100 to 150. And let's see how this sounds. Let me just do some crazy automation back and forth. Notice when I do that too, the time changes at the bottom. So time speeds up and slows down. Number 10. To delete a range of automation, first make a selection in time and then press the delete key. To avoid deleting any underlying MIDI or audio, you want to first move the automation to a separate lane. So here is our automation, which is not automating anything right now. So we can just highlight it and then click delete to delete it. Let me hide these separate lanes right now. Uh, all right, so here is the strobe cutoff automation. If I didn't like this automation right here and I highlight it and click delete, notice how the MIDI file also got deleted. So let's undo that, Command Z. We want to first move it to a separate lane by clicking the plus button down here. The automation goes away and it shows up on the new lane. So now the strobe cutoff is in this lane. And if I make this selection again, click delete, then it only deletes what's in this selection. Number 11. You can wipe automation by grabbing one breakpoint and dragging it across many other breakpoints while holding down the shift key. So here's my breakpoint that I want to move. Without holding the shift key, it won't let me go past the other breakpoints. I can't go past here. Now I'm going to click shift, hold it down, and now I can move it past and it overwrites the others. But if I move it back to the left, they come back. If I let go, then the automation is gone. It's not coming back unless I undo. And last, number 12, 
use the lock envelopes button to lock and unlock automation to MIDI or audio clips. So the lock automation is up here at the top. Let me show you what happens without lock automation. So I have this automation here and as I move this clip, the automation moves with it, overriding anything that I drag it on top of. Let me undo. Now if I click the lock automation button, the automation will stay in place regardless of where I move the clip. So now if I move the clip here, the automation still stays where it was. Well, I hope this video was informative. I hope it helped you guys out. If you have any other questions concerning this or anything else involving Ableton or audio production, send me a comment. I'd be glad to help you out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And I'd also like to mention that I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one teaching over Skype or Google Hangouts. So if you'd like any lessons, please feel free to contact me. And as Bill O'Reilly would say, to play us out, <laughs> here I'm going to play my song, Moy Rustang.